On this iCave Answers subscription only iPhones, macOS 13, MacBook Air screen sizes, did Prosa leak the iPhone 15, not 14, massive Apple Watches, ProMotion displays, more accessible iPhone pricing, iDrink Answers Hennessy Edition, Apple's AR killer feature, future of devices, pro iPad apps, Dolby Atmos vs DTSX, and is the Apple Studio design an iMac preview? Plus, we'll be going live later today. Want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. So thanks for joining me on the show. We are going to get through all of the questions that you've been asking this week. And if you've got some more that you want me to answer on the live show later, let me know using iCave Answers down in the comments. First up, Brian Data asks, iCave Answers, is Apple proposing a subscription-only iPhone, or will you still be able to purchase an iPhone if that's your thing? No, it looks very much like that the uh, the option will be there to subscribe to the iPhone. At this point, it does mean you won't own the iPhone, but I think the vast majority of people, when they get a new iPhone, they either hand it off to a family member or they sell it on or it just sits in a drawer. Now, if you're someone that sells it on, having a subscription iPhone, probably a better idea in the first place because you're basically taking out that hassle level. Of course, it does depend on how often you change your iPhone and how uh, how much you can get for that iPhone when you move it on. These are all questions that you would have to kind of balance out for yourself, but there is certainly a convenience factor to not having to worry about all of that stuff if you just subscribe. Will subscriptions be perfect for everyone? No. For example, I tend to keep older iPhones and use them as additional camera angles or for example right now we're using an iPhone 5 as my teleprompter so that I can see the questions without having to kind of look away but that's I'm kind of an edge case most people are not setting up teleprompters and multiple camera angles for YouTube channels do most people need to keep their iPhone once they're finished with it and they're getting a new one probably not it might work out cheaper for multiple people in your family to have a current iPhone if this is the case rather than handing them down and then replacing and replacing and replacing. But your mileage will vary. Thomas Rabenstein asks, I gave answers. Having finally received the new Mac Studio and with no Mac in the cards for the next few years, my attention is turning back to Mac OS. Since WWDC is getting closer and closer, but I haven't heard anything about the upcoming Mac OS version, I'm wondering, have you? Are there any known changes or news? And this is crazy, isn't it? We are hearing almost nothing about any of the software. We've heard very little about any any software updates, not just for Mac OS, but also for iOS, iPad OS, Watch OS. I don't think we've actually seen any real leaks. Now, I'd be really interested to know what you guys would want from Mac OS at this point. What is it missing? Um, I think optimization is something that is required this year uh, to fit with the the new chips that have been coming out because it doesn't look like the studio in at least the uh, ultra formation is taking advantage of all those cores just yet but i don't think that's based on the operating system but the individual software pieces so i think there's some work for apple to do to make it easier for people to do that the one thing that i would love to see coming in the next version of mac os is and i think we've talked about this a little bit in the past some kind of enhancement perhaps to Rosetta that allows Windows x86 apps to run on Mac OS uh, a lot more easily. We know that Apple can do it from Mac OS on x86 to uh, Mac OS on Apple Silicon. Perhaps it's not that difficult to then translate from Windows stuff to Mac stuff and then all of a sudden all of the games appear and the Mac becomes a far more open platform for people that will use their computers for multiple things. Now I don't think that a gaming focused uh, Apple device specifically is something that we need and I've, I've mentioned this before I don't think that Apple will make something that is specific to gaming but I think what would be better is for Apple to bring support for Windows style gaming in the way that Steam Deck is doing for Windows uh, gaming to the handhelds if they could translate that somehow to the Mac that would be incredible and maybe Steam would even work with them on it because Steam doesn't care what hardware you're using they just want to be able to sell you games. Randomness R asks, IK answers, why did Apple decide to do a 15.2 inch MacBook Air instead of a 15.4 to 15.6 inch considering the last 15 inch MacBook Pro was 15.4 inches? Now I'm not quite sure where you've got the 15.2 from there could be a rumor out there that I've not seen I completely acknowledge that but we don't know um, and the main reason would be this is a completely new design it, it's not going to be using existing panels from old stuff it's going to be uh, almost certainly if we do get this 15 inch MacBook Air which everyone seems to want so much and there are now rumors that it could be on the way it's going to be its own thing and I think Apple will also want to keep a 15 inch MacBook Air as small as possible because they they want to keep that form factor of uh, light and to keep the Air branding, that just makes a lot of sense. 
Now, I don't think that in real world use, most people are going to notice a 0.2 of an inch difference, especially when this is pushing all the way out into the bezels and probably got that little notch at the top for your cameras and stuff. I think this is going to be an incredible looking device if Apple actually pulls it off. But let me know your thoughts. Randomness R asks, I gave answers. Will the iPhone 15 only have a hole punch camera with the face ID being under the display? And it looks like John's renders of the iPhone 14 were actually the iPhone 15, considering Apple sticks to a three year phone design cycle. What do you think? I mean, this is absolutely possible. We've seen already that the flat sided Apple Watch that was being talked about in the past the renders are still out there and it's not just renders it's cad files that seem to be coming from case makers and all that sort of thing too but they were also on the same file with the apple watch that we got last year the apple watch series 7 with the slightly large design and the rounded uh, edges so it could well be that this is actually still a forthcoming product and not something that is just kind of dropped at the last minute it could be that they were planning to bring this out and that I still think that the 7 that we got is actually the rugged one because it's got that thicker glass that we heard about. They they called it the most durable Apple Watch ever. I really think that that's what's happened and I think the flat sided one was supposed to be the 7. So um, that's, that's my thoughts anyway and that's why we got the delays because Apple had to switch their production from the one design that they were about to do to the other design that they were looking to do a little bit later in the year that would make a lot of sense to me. But yes, it's quite possible that this design that we've seen for the iPhone 14, which John leaked just before the iPhone 13 event, if uh, memory serves, could well, in fact, be the 15. Will they get the uh, Face ID under the display? I really don't think they will. I don't think that's actually going to be as practical as everyone thinks. I think everyone's kind of overblown the technology. Yes, Android has single hole punches for stuff, but they also don't have Face ID. They've decided that that's not good enough, whereas Apple has decided that Touch ID is not good enough. I think uh, I think I know which I prefer, which is to keep Face ID. Random Nassar asks, IK answers, any chance we get a 50mm Max or Ultra Apple Watch? I would love that. I would have always said no, but I think, what are we up to now? 45 uh, mil for the largest ones. I think it's quite possible that a, a 50 mil could happen one day. Um, we've heard from Ross Displayman that they're looking at a third size for the Apple Watches, and uh, I think that would be great. Uh, and we say a third size. Right now, we still have the Apple Watch Series 3 that comes in 38 and 42. We have the Apple Watch Series 7 that comes in 41 and 45, and we, we've actually got six sizes right now. So this is just a crazy way of working. James Apple asks. How can Apple make ProMotion happen on their higher end monitors because Thunderbolt can't keep a display refreshing at that speed and the only thing I can think of is HDMI 2.1. What are your thoughts? Uh, no, Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt 3 can absolutely um, get them refreshing at that speed. What we have right now is we have a 6K 60Hz display in the Pro Display XDR and that uses 13 gigabits per second of the bandwidth and the total bandwidth that you can put over Thunderbolt is in fact uh, 40, I believe. So it can be done for a 5K, that would be certainly under that 40 gigabits barrier. It might be though that I think it's 20 either way um, and 40 in total. So maybe they'd have to find a way of sending all of the data in one direction. But actually I think 5K is probably around 10 gigabits. I think that is doable potentially. HDMI 2.1 I don't think has more bandwidth than uh, than Thunderbolt 4, but correct me if I'm wrong. James Apple asks, will this rent model be the golden standard for buying an iPhone in the future? And are the excuses for an acquiring an iPhone seem to be getting louder? Because the central point for a vast majority of people was this uh, X iPhone is out of my budget, but not anymore with recent news. I do think that Apple will want people to subscribe, uh, but I don't think it's specifically because they want to bring the cost down. I think it's because they want to uh, just have that recurring revenue and no month by month what's coming in. If you look at Apple's revenue graphs each year, you get spikes when the different product uh, releases happen. And the biggest one of the year is always when the iPhone comes out. What would happen is that Apple's revenue would then become a lot more smooth if they were getting subscription revenue for iPhones every month, rather than having the one big quarter where you get a massive spike. Now, this is not financial advice, obviously, but if that was to happen, Apple would all of a sudden not have that big spike one year would miss um, probably what was going on in terms of uh, the expectations of the market, which might really hurt their stock value, which I don't think 
actually matters to anyone because it's paper money. But it does mean that if people wanted to get in, that would be a really good time to do it, not advice. And James Apple, what goes well with Hennessy White? This is I Drinks Answers. As you know, I went on my tropical vacation and bought Hennessy White duty free when I went to Jamaica. Back to the States now. So uh, Hennessy White is not something I've ever tried because it actually only really exists in the Caribbean. It's not something they sell elsewhere. However, I've done a bit of research. It's quite a light cognac um, or a light brandy. I don't even know if it classes as cognac because it's quite young. Um, but it's going to be very easy drinking. You can just drink that uh, on the rocks would be great. I think it would be really good with a ginger ale, uh, making like a, a, a brandy buck. I think that would be pretty cool. Team Kinetics asks, I gave answers when discussing the unlikely prospect of an Apple gaming console. You often explain that Apple don't make single-use hardware. For example, iPad is a gaming machine, a productivity machine, and a content consumption device. What do you think would be the many functions of an AR VR headset? Super excited to see what use case Apple can put forward for this device to differentiate it from things like Oculus Quest. So I think one of the biggest things that Apple wants to do with uh, AR VR is basically have it as an event use and not something that you kind of live in for your days but imagine first of all that you could have virtual screens all around you and basically as much screen real estate as you wanted i mean it feels like almost apple was avoiding releasing displays until recently because they kind of knew that we weren't going to need physical displays for much longer on top of that gaming of course is going to be key for things like virtual reality and augmented reality but also things like being able to use it for engineering or the way that HoloLens works uh, in surgery for doctors to be able to kind of visualize what they're working on. But certainly in engineering, it would work in a very similar way where you can kind of have exploded views in front of you. You can have uh, manuals. In day-to-day -day, though, I think it's going to be more of a communications device where you can kind of be in virtual meetings. So kind of remote working in a more compelling way. I think that would be a part of it too. Team Kinetics, IK answers. Over the past 10 to 15 years, mobile phones have evolved from many different form factors to all generally being thin slabs with a screen on one face. In the good old days when the mobile arena was dominated by Nokia, dumb phones and iPhone 13 would have been the stuff of science fiction. So what do you think is next? What will mobile communications devices look like in another decade and how what might we use them? Wearables, foldables, AR, VR or something completely different? Um, I've got to say that I think uh, audio is going to be a big part of it. I think... Um, the way that you can use AirPods now, but like I already do this and just have AirPods in my ears, it will read me my messages, I will dictate a response, and then it will send it off as a text message. I think that's going to be a, a big part of it. Uh, so when I'm walking down the street, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I think the watch will be another good part of it. So like if you've got a text message with an image, you'll just glance at your watch and that's where you will find out what uh, people are sending you. Uh, I don't think your phone's going to come out of your pocket as much as it has in the past, which maybe means that it you know, you could work off an iPad that lives in your bag and you interact with it via your watch when you're doing everything else. I think getting towards this kind of digital hub thing where you've got one primary device and like tertiary devices around it w might work quite well. So maybe it becomes this foldable device that is an iPad slash MacBook uh, that lives in your in your bag and then you kind of interact with the world through it. So that maybe has your SIM card or your wireless uh, cellular connection, and then your watch shows you any visuals that you need on the fly, and your AirPods kind of take on that side of thing, the interaction a little bit more. That's kind of the way that I see it going until at least we get AR glasses, that sort of stuff. Team Kinetics, WWDC 2022. I'm still holding out for more pro app support on the iPad OS in future. Moving the iPad Air to M1 chip is good for logistics. More devices using the same chip simplifies the supply chain. But could this also suggest that the iPad will be doing more heavy lifting over the coming years? Come on, Apple. Final Cut Touch, Logic Pro Touch. Even if it's not a complete version, implementing iCloud Sync for projects and hand off Final Cut from iPad to Mac would be superb. I'd love to lay out the timeline on the iPad with the Apple Pencil, then finish the edit on a Mac. I now prefer editing short simple videos on LumaFusion on the iPad because it's such a pleasure to use that device. Yep, completely agree. I think that it might well be that you need to have an M1 or greater chip in your system to be able to use things like these pro apps. Uh, I think that would be a differentiation point. It also kind of leaves the, uh, the new iPad mini out in the cold a little bit because that's got the A15. It's the kind of newest chip, if you like, in an iPad but not the most powerful because the M1's got the multi-core. So it's a little bit of a different one. I'm wondering if the 
uh, the iPad mini is the only one that got A15 because it's got the smallest battery and that would have just been sapped too quickly by an M1. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see what it'll do. Perhaps there'll be versions of Final Cut for all of the iPads, but certain effects will need the more powerful chips or you can hand it off to another system. Um, interesting to know what they're going to do with it to be completely honest and I think on the live stream later tonight that's one of the big things that we'll be talking about is what you guys want to see from the software at WWDC because they have locked it down um, software doesn't have a supply chain is one of the issues for us as leakers and, and as rumour mill people because um, they don't have to buy it from anyone it, it's just made in house nothing leaks it's uh, it's tricky for us. Lars Anderson asks, I gave answers on paper. DTS X is better than Dolby Atmos. Is there a reason why Apple TV 4K doesn't support DTS X, but only Dolby Atmos? Uh, I'm guessing that's more, uh, more speakers in different locations. I don't know that there's a reason that it doesn't particularly. I think Atmos is kind of better known by a lot of people. And there's a lot more kind of sound systems out there that support it already. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it in the future. And Lars Anderson asks, iCave answers, since the gorgeous studio monitor is basically an iMac with an A13 SoC, do you think the yet to be seen bigger iMac will look like the studio monitor? Do you think that the present A13 SoC in the studio monitor can work as an external all-round coprocessor to the machine it's hooked up to? Please take a seat. Um, I, this is gonna this is gonna be hard to hear, but I don't think there is a bigger iMac coming. I don't think we're gonna see any more iMac sizes, I think iMac is now a 24 inch device, that's the iMac. I think Apple was quite clear when they discontinued the larger iMacs at the same time as releasing the Mac Studio that this is the replacement for the larger, the, the pro level iMacs. Um, your regular iMac would be the, uh, the M1 Max and your pro iMac basically is the M1 Ultra. So I don't think we're going to see any more bigger iMacs all in ones. And I think that's fine because I think it's okay for people to have the option of this is the 27 inch display version, this is the 32 inch display version which potentially we could see at WWDC and you can choose which display you attach to the in, what would be the internal hardware. I think the Mac Studio is certainly compact enough to work as an equivalent to an all-in-one just like the Mac Mini is with this system. It doesn't feel like I've got a, a tower PC uh, you know, it's not like the Windows world. This works fine for me. So, I don't think we're going to see an iMac 32 inch or 30 inch or 27 inch ever again, uh, or certainly not in the near future. I think what we've got now, the Mac Studio, is our iMac replacement. So that's it for this show, guys. Don't forget we've got the live show coming up this evening. I would love for you guys to join me for that. With any questions that you've got, hit me up down in the comments, iCave Answers, and I'll see you then. Thanks to the Patreons. <laughs>